And now, parked across the street, 50 yards away, Coleman simply points his device at Kelly's house. 10%. 30%. And in less than one minute... I'm trying to force her phone on my network, and I, I got her. Okay, guys, here we are with the Flipper Zero and the Wi-Fi dev board, which we are going to start modifying momentarily. And we are going to use it with this antenna out here, which I nicknamed the Death Ray. Let's go out and take a look at the Death Ray. And uh, yeah, it's snowing a little bit out here. It's sunny and snowing. So here we go. This is a 24 dB high gain, very directional antenna. It's parabolic, as you can see. It's got that curve to it. It's got a focal point in the center. And uh, yeah, wherever this thing's pointed, uh, that signal is going. It's concentrating the signal. 24 dB is a lot of gain. And uh, we're not only going to connect this to the Flipper's uh, ESP32 radio, we're also going to put an amplifier on it. So it's going to be really powerful. That's why I'm calling it the Death Ray. And uh, there you go. Pretty cool antenna. So actually, I've used this before. I had it on the roof of my house, and I was able to connect to a Wi-Fi access point in a gas station that was five kilometers away. Um, I did use the amplifier on that one, too. It was pretty cool getting free Wi-Fi from a gas station. It was five kilometers away. So this is uh, basically what you're going to be able to do with the flipper you probably if you had this up on your roof on a rotor you could you could pretty much point it in different directions and pinpoint your target okay guys so we're going to start doing some experiments the antenna is actually at 25 feet so i'm going to be using a spectrum analyzer and also the hack rf to generate a test signal so we can get some readings of what our gain is um should be interesting stick around guys Okay, you guys, so we're going to start here with our uh, instrumentation. We're going to be using a Hack RF on the left there to generate a test signal, and on the right is our Spectrum Analyzer. And uh, Spectrum Analyzer, we will turn it on here. There it goes. And uh, I'll just show you. I already programmed it, but... Uh, the frequency I centered at 2440, that's 2.44. Start at 2.4, span 80, that's the Wi-Fi band um, from one end to the other, the 2.4 gig Wi-Fi band. And uh, you can see our scale there goes about minus 50. What it's showing there is just Wi-Fi traffic that is presently um, in the air around me so yeah so let's go over now both of these uh, have a broadband antenna on it I'm gonna go over the hack RF and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a test signal and we're gonna use jammer to do that it's actually quite helpful so the center again we want to be on 2440 we will put that in there and uh the width we're gonna do one one megahertz we need to enable a range and uh as for a modulation we'll do a random random fsk okay and then look at that <laughs> there we are nice big peak okay and i'm gonna turn it off so we'll go stop. Okay, I stopped it. Start it again, and there's our big signal. So amplitude, we're going to just change the scale here so you can get an idea how strong that signal is. Look at that. That's right up there, minus 20. So th that's because they're right next to each other. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to put the hacker ref outside right by that antenna. It's going to be 25 feet and I'm going to actually use the same antenna. So I'm not going to use the high gain antenna just yet. And we're going to measure um, the same signal. Okay. Stand by guys. Okay. I'm ready to go outside. I got my coat on. So we're going to take the hacker ref, which you can see is running. 
and then take it outside. We're going to place it right here for now. And there she is. Okay. And what we're going to do after that, we're going to connect it to that cable, to that antenna. So we're going to head back in. Let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer. And yeah, you see how much weaker it is. Can barely see it compared to everything else. It just kind of blends in. So it just goes to show you about the antenna. Okay, let's hook it up to that big antenna and uh, we'll see what we get. Stand by. Okay, so I have now connected to that LMR 400, that big thick cable. There's an SMA connector on the end there, and that is running around to the Hack RF. And I am going to start it. There it goes. It's transmitting. So let's go inside and see what field strength we have. That thing pointed right at us. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Definitely, uh, definitely stronger than it was. Yeah. That is minus 50, so it's pretty strong. Let me try. Hold on a sec. Looks about the same. Let's try a different antenna here. We're going to see it. Well, it's definitely not, uh... yeah, it's coming at us. Okay, we're going to try the amplifier next. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the amplifier here. This is the amplifier, and I have the antenna mounted right to the amplifier, as you see. Now, this amplifier runs on 5 volts, so I have connected on a USB cable. And I'm going to plug that into that battery, and it's going to give our amplifier the power it needs, and that will also make it portable. So let's first try this. We will turn on the transmitter, and you can see kind of something there, but the amplifier is not plugged in. And uh, let's try that. Whoa, there we go with the amplifier on. Holy crap, look at that. Minus 13. Of course, I'm right next to it. Oh, it keeps going. All right, it's minus 10. That's cooking hot. <laughs> that is really hot. So, um, just see when we unplug the amplifier, what happens? Yeah, it drops down to hardly anything. So, okay, let's go connect this out to the antenna. Let's plug that back in the battery. Wow, look at that. <laughs> cool okay let's try that out stand by just out of curiosity before we actually take this outside remember it was hitting uh minus 10 what i've done is i've just taken the amplifier out but i put the hack rf in its antenna exactly where the amplifier and its antenna was so the spacing is exactly the same between those two antennas and uh we're going to start the hack RF, and then we're going to look at it, and you see it's heading about minus 20, and before it was heading minus 10, so that shows the amplifier gives us about 10 dB gain, and that is three times, more than three times, uh, the, every 3 dB is uh, double the gain, so that amplifier is tripling whatever this was putting out. Okay, stand by guys. Okay, I'm back outside and we got uh, the hacker ref generating our signal. We've got our 10 dB amplifier battery pack and that's connected to the LMR 400. And then now I'm going to go in my house. I'm going to go to the far end of my house and I'm going to see how strong this signal is. Stand by. Okay, guys, I just want to show you I'm at the far end of my house and there it is there. Right in the center, it is the strongest signal. It's oh, it's more powerful than the Wi-Fi in my house, which is pretty cool. And just to give you an idea, look at that. I'm like way, way down there. Really cool. So we'll make our way back to the kitchen. 
You can see it getting stronger and stronger. But yeah, it's it's definitely lighting up my house. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna do some experiments with Flipper. Okay, so while we have the Spectrum Analyzer running on the Wi-Fi band, I have shut off the uh, HackRF test signal outside. So what you're seeing there is just normal Wi-Fi traffic in my neighborhood. And uh, what we're going to do, I'm just going to demonstrate here first. Um, we're going to go in a Marauder. And we are... We're going to do the Rickroll attack. What I like about Rickroll is it actually scans up and down the band. So it's utilizing the entire, um, and you'll see here, watch this when I start it going. Look at that, isn't that crazy? It's using the entire band, channel one through probably 13. Not sure in North America we only go up to channel 11, but uh, yeah, there we go. Let's stop Rick Roll and we start Rick Roll. So we are going to. There is, uh, it's very hard to see, but I will point it out. And this is the built in antenna, and it looks like a squiggly line. There is actually a spot right there for a coaxial connector. Um, these ones don't come with it because it's using the built-in antenna. Now, right there is a very small resistor that can be put into two different positions. One to switch the signal to the coaxial connector, which we don't have, and the other is to send it to the built-in antenna. So what I'm actually gonna do is right here, I'm going to cut the track and I'm going to solder on uh, a cable similar to one of these, but a female. And that will allow us to connect that and on to the flipper and to the amplifier and to the big antenna. So there you go, guys. We're going to start that right now. It's going to be interesting to see what we can do with the death ray. <laughs> That's so crazy. Let's put it right up against the antenna here. Whoa, it's going crazy. Okay, stand by guys. Okay, and trying to keep things scientific here. One last thing uh, before we modify the flipper. We need to test uh, the Rick roll at a range, the same range. So we are going to start the Rick roll, and there it is taking place. Now I'm going to place it outside right next to the antenna. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to place it right on top of here. Okay, there we go. We're Rick rolling. Red lights on, and it's basically exactly the same distance from the big antenna. So we'll go back in the house and we'll see what the normal antenna. Yeah, we can see some Rick roll in there. So we're going to see, okay, it's about 50 to 60. So when we're done with the booster, we're going to see uh, in the big antenna what we get. Okay, stand by guys. Okay guys, so what I've done is I've started to scratch away right here. Uh, the coating on top of the track to expose the copper below. I will be then making a cut right about here through that copper track, disconnecting the internal antenna. And then I will be using one of these. It's an SMA female connector on that end. And uh, I've stripped the end, uh, as you can kind of see. I'll put it up against something uh, darker. There's the shield twisted to the side, and there is the center wire, and the end is stripped. I will be soldering the end wire uh, to where I cut that track on this side here. So it's connected to the radio. 
And the shield, I will just solder that to the top of the case because the case is actually a ground and very easy to solder to that metal. So it'll be just basically like that, the way it's going to be wired on. Now, the nice thing about what I'm doing is if you wanted to restore it back to the way it was, you can remove the coax cable wire and then put a blob of solder here across where you cut it. And you would be restoring this back to exactly the way it is now. And uh, okay, so let's let's start. Let's start soldering. Stand by, guys. Okay, well, there's the finished product. And I'll give you a little rundown here of what I did. I used the very sharp box cutter knife and I made, I scored it right there, cutting through that track. I then had that track scratched so that it was exposed copper. Was able to tack a little bit of solder on there and uh, tack down the center wire. And the shield wires are just twisted together and soldered to the top of the case, which is ground. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a zip tie right there through that hole to tie it down. And uh, there you go. I got myself an external antenna connector. Now, something else to point out about the ESP32, and this is very exciting. It can also be a Bluetooth radio. Uh, right now, it's flashed to be a Wi-Fi radio. It cannot do both at the same time, but it can be one or the other. In uh, Bluetooth mode, if the flipper had the proper firmware to communicate with it as a Bluetooth radio, I'm pretty sure that probably exists somewhere out there. Uh, you could then use this uh, same setup here for your BLE uh, spam attack and use a high gain antenna and point it at somebody. Um, so yeah, very, uh, very cool. Okay, guys. So now I'm just going to zip tie that down and we are going to start doing some testing with the amplifier and uh, the death ray antenna. Okay, stand by. Okay, so there we are with just the uh, background Wi-Fi going on. And here we are with the Flipper Zero with the modified uh, Wi-Fi dev board with the connector on it. We are now going to take that outside and we're going to rick roll and we're going to see how much better uh, a signal we're getting on the spectrum analyzer and then we are going to add the power booster as well okay guys we're going to head outside now and do this okay so i got the flipper connected directly to the death ray antenna and we're going to now start the transmitter and the red light is on let's go inside and see what kind of an improvement we have Oh yeah, definitely got an improvement over what we had before. Let's add the amplifier now. Let's bring this up here. Now let's put the booster on it now. Okay, we are now Rick rolling through the amplifier. Let's go in and check it out. Oh yeah, that's a lot more powerful. Look at that, it's really dancing. Definitely stronger with the booster. Cool. Let's uh, put it like that. <clears throat> Let's go for a walk. Wow, look at that. Still picking it up. Walking through the house here. All the way to my front door. And it's still rick rolling. <laughs> Great. That's what I want to see. Look at that. We are rick rolling. Let's try trying to change the polarity. Seems to be good all around. Excellent. That's only a 10 dB amplifier. They claim it's about a watt, but on that Wi-Fi system, but um, there are 
20 watt amplifiers there are there's even more powerful than that so i'll show you guys a website where you can buy really powerful ones if you really want to go nuts but this is still pretty good and you can beam this out any any uh any target you want with that directional antenna so there you go guys hope you like that Rick Rowland, look at this, Wi-Fi jacking, three ways to protect yourself. And I'm showing you three ways how to do it. Let's, uh, let's actually go over and look at, uh, we're getting Rick Rolled here. Yep, we're getting Rick Rolled. <laughs> never going to let you down, never going to run around and desert you. How funny. Less than one minute. I'm trying to force her phone on my network, and I, I got her. Now, to prove that Coleman's got control of Kelly's phone, she's going to try going to a website, but she's not going to get there. Wow, what the heck is that? Looks like uh, that is a phone sex website. You didn't want to go to that website. Coleman forced you onto it? Yes, I did not want to do that. Okay guys, so here's how it's done. I found this ESP32 schematic and uh, what it's showing here is a close up clearly of the built-in antenna. Here is that resistor I was talking about. It's actually a jumper. It is a zero ohm resistor. So it's acting as a jumper, in this case, a switch. If it's placed in R14, it's connecting the radio to the coaxial connector if that connector is on the board, which we don't have. So ours was designed to use R15, which took it straight to the antenna. So what I did is I cut it right here and I scraped off the coating here, exposing more of the copper. And I soldered my center wire for my coax right here and my ground, the shield right to the case, the metal case. Now, what's nice about this is you can remove it and you can put a, where I cut it, you can just solder across and you've restored the same functionality. Going over here, I did find, uh, let me show you this one first. This is an eight watt amplifier. Now in that news article that I just showed you in the full article, the guy I noticed in his car, he had a 25 watt amplifier. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of power to be focusing on a particular target. No wonder he got her phone. So these amplifiers are not very expensive. As you see, there's one there, 80, $81. Um, they have some other ones here. There is, this one doesn't say the power over there. It does four watts. This one's five watts. And uh, another four water. Over on this site here, they have some, uh, <clears throat> Much more expensive, these guys, as you can see. But that's a 4-watt amplifier. It does both bands, 2.4, 5.8. Okay, so there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Anyone closer to his signal than the one the city is blasting out will only see the fake, wicked free Wi-Fi option. And if your device connected to the real system in the past, it could even automatically join this rogue Wi-Fi network. So you just called it the same thing? Yeah. Or is there any slight difference? Nope. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to show you a new antenna, which is omnidirectional. And I'm calling it the Death Sphere. And this antenna is actually probably more practical for just general use. If you don't really know what you're after, you want it going in all directions, this is, this is what you're going to want to do. So here we go, guys. First of all, let me show you the Death Sphere. And I'll show you some footage I shot yesterday of me actually setting this up. But there it is there. That is a six foot Wi-Fi antenna. It is 16 dB and it is omnidirectional. So it is sending its signal out in all directions in the form of a sphere. If you were actually able to see the signal, it would look like a big ball coming off that antenna. That's why I'm nicknaming it the depth sphere. And uh, just another section of some fiberglass. 
to get it up there, fiberglass pole, and then there is a metal stand. The cable coming out of it, I use some LMR 400. It is the best cable you can get for microwave and especially up in the 2.4 gig band. Very low loss. That cable comes up to here where I convert it from an end connector to an SMA. And I believe this is RG174 coming in, this type of cable. Uh, okay for short runs. And uh, there is a 10 dB amplifier powered by that battery. And that runs up to the flipper zero. There is the ESP32, which I modified in my previous video called the Death Ray. And uh, so I am running uh, Unleashed on this flipper because it works best with Evil Portal. And this is the first demonstration I'm going to do. Just so you guys, I will do another video exclusively on evil portal and how to set this up because there's a lot of people asking questions because I had trouble setting this up too so I went out and uh, did a lot of research on this the best way to do it there is uh, a special flash it's kind of a the ESP32 is set up exclusively right now to do this it's not able to do anything else with this flash on there it was the only way I could actually get it to work but uh, let's go down here, select AP name. I already have in there Amazon free Wi-Fi, which we will save. And then we're going to select the portal page. And I only have Amazon in there right now. And the index one is a test. So we will select that and we will go up here and we will start the portal. And this is the response you're going to get. And that green light should come on, means the transmitter is running. It is sending out its beacon right now. And the web server, the flipper is actually acting as a web server in a DHCP, which is pretty cool. Uh, what that is, is, well, you'll see in a minute. So we're going to go over here and we're going to look at Wi-Fi networks. And you will see, there is one huge big one there called Wi-Fi, Amazon free Wi-Fi. Look at how strong that signal is compared to everything else uh, around me. And uh, they are actually using 40 megahertz wide uh, channel. For, you know, that's why it's so big. Um, that is already preset in the configuration. I don't know if that's changeable. I would actually like to change it to 20, but anyways, 40 is fine. We got a lot of power. And uh, yeah, look at that. We're taking up half the Wi-Fi band there. And uh, if we go here, we can actually see it shows the power of uh, on, on the signal strength. And uh, oh, there it is down at the bottom there. And we are 41. Look at that 41 compared to everybody else. Wow. Pretty good. Really strong. Well, we're kind of walking on everybody. So anyways, uh, let me show you guys here. If I do that, I can connect. Connecting. Hold on. I think we got to do this and go there into connections and Wi-Fi. Oh, we got a we got a problem. Okay, guys, back to the flipper. I noticed this before. I get a couple of illegal Wi-Fi characters being sent after the Wi-Fi access point name um the way to correct that is just go here and go back see that i'm pushing it and nothing's happening so there's two illegal characters that are hidden there this is a bug in the script but if i do that and then i save it we should be all good and we go back and start the portal yeah, so there she goes. We should get her back. Let's go. Uh, yeah, there it is. See, now it says Amazon free Wi-Fi, and it doesn't have those question marks at the end. Uh, that will allow us to connect to that access point. And uh, now we need to sign in. Sign in. There we go. 
Okay, now, wow, does that not look like Amazon to you? <laughs> that is all coming from the Flipper Zero. And uh, yeah, it's totally bogus. And uh, that would probably fool just about anybody. I mean, I, I would be fooled by that too. That, that does look like an Amazon login. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna put in my name. And the password I am going to choose is 2469, my favorite password. And then we're gonna say go. And okay, I think it sent it. And of course there won't be any response from the portal, but the credentials just got sent. Peter, 2469, there you go guys, isn't that cool? And I will be doing a video, follow-up video after this one on evil portal and how you can set up an evil portal too and there's all kinds of different portals that you can use these web pages um pretty cool here we go over here on a windows computer amazon and we'll go connect and this is pretty cool what it does on windows look at that There we go. Same thing, and it's it, it's all automatic uh, on a Windows computer. You just connect to. Whoops. Let's see. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, test, and then I'm gonna put in four, five, six, seven, eight as my password. And I'm gonna send that and I'm gonna go, hey, what's going on? It's not working. And there we go. And before people start going, oh, how come you got so many tabs open? Because I've had people say that before about my computer. Well, here you go, guys. Look at that. Sign in and ask an airline. These are all the different portals. There's Amazon, American Airlines. That's Apple, AT&T. These are all uh, ones you can put on there. Facebook, pretty good. JetBlue, Microsoft. Yeah, so let's go. Let's go back here and let's look at our signals again. And let's look at the graph. Oh, this thing, oh, there it goes. Yeah, look at that. Amazon free Wi-Fi. That'd be funny if somebody in my neighborhood <laughs> tries to connect to it. Uh, yeah, but if they did, I, I wouldn't do anything. Anyways, uh, here we go. So now we're going to do some RF experiments now that you've seen this. And I will do some more on this later on actually how to set this up in a different video. But there is the Death Sphere. And there is the death ray if you want to do a targeted attack directional. That's the type of antenna you'd want to use. And uh, I'm going to hook that up. We'll probably do some more RF experiments on that one too now that I changed the polarization because a lot of people were upset that I had it polarized wrong. And why I turned it 90 degrees was it was for the picture actually because the flipper was sitting on it. And uh, yeah, anyways, we'll get back to that. Hopefully it won't rain. It's not the greatest weather right now, but uh, there you go, guys. So, okay, stand by. We're going to do some RF experiments now with the spectrum analyzer and uh, see. Uh, oh, and I got two amplifiers. Um, show you that. I got another amplifier here that we're going to hook up. These amps are designed for Wi-Fi. They are bi-directional. And what that means is when you are transmitting, they turn on and transmit. When you're not transmitting, they receive. They go the other way. I tried connecting two of them together for Wi-Fi. It did not work, probably because of the timing. And when you're trying to transmit, them both switching back and forth, it just didn't work. But they do work if you're sending just a carrier in one way, in one direction. Um, I'm going to be doing that with the Hack RF just to do some tests and we will see how much power we can get out there and uh, what the death 
sphere. Okay, guys, stand by. Okay, guys, you ever see a Wi-Fi antenna this big before? This thing is six feet, six feet in length. And uh, we're going to put that up in a moment. And I'm going to wire it up with some of this heavy duty. This is LMR 400 with end connectors. And uh, that's the stuff you'll want to use for microwave frequencies is very low loss. So, yeah, we're going to go over here and get the death ray. I'm going to take the death ray off that stand. And we're going to mount it right on that momentarily. Stand by, guys. Okay, the death ray is down. And the death sphere. There it is there. An antenna. Big stick way up there. And I made a stand for it. And we got the cable coming down here. And that is going to go to that SMA to go in to see Flipper, which is right there. Okay, guys. Standing by. The Death Sphere. Okay, guys, I'm just getting prepared here. We're getting the uh, Hack RF Porta Pack ready. And there's my spectrum analyzer, and you can see a lot of spikes at the left, which is around channel one. And that, sure enough, correlates with uh, what we're seeing on the graph here. And the biggest one there is the Amazon Free Wi Fi, which we are going to shut down now. And we will stop the portal. The green light will turn blue and we will momentarily see that disappearing. There still is quite a bit of activity. You can see at, whoa, look at that. That was weird. Right at the moment uh, the Amazon shut down, there was like a big burst there. That was cool to see. Anyways, uh, looks like channel one, this is it here is the most active or most powerful in my neighborhood. So we'll start with that one. Uh, channel 11 over here is uh, kind of weird. Usually channel six is the most popular in the middle, but uh, we're gonna uh, start putting some carriers up and uh, see what power levels we can get on the spectrum analyzer. With this experiment, I will be keeping these two devices in this exact spot. And uh, the antenna outside the death sphere will not move either. It will be there too. And it's probably about 25 feet away. Okay, guys, stand by. Okay, guys, what you're seeing here is just normal internet uh, radio traffic that is being received right here on this table. And there's a spectrum analyzer, just normal activity. And as we can see here, channel one to the left is the most uh, strongest signal uh, that we're able to receive in channel 11 to the right is uh, all the second strongest. So let's go over to HackRF and see what we can do with, uh, oh, hello, we have a visitor here. What's your name? He's coming to watch the show. Hey. <laughs> so cute, look at that. I don't chew on my wires, okay? He's done that before. <laughs> he really has. Anyways, there's the death sphere, and we are connecting through 10 dB amplifier. And the hack RF on centered around channel 1, 2410, sweeping 20 megahertz, um, random FSK. Gain 47 and see that A0. I just discovered that that is an amplifier and it gives me another. If I change that to a one, it gives me another 5 dB. So we'll try that later. But right now we're going to turn turn that on. We are transmitting and uh, you can see on the spectrum analyzer all that uh, random noise, the left. And that will that's going to cause a problem on channel one. I should probably see this something momentarily here. As soon as this uh, iPad app refreshes, we'll probably see uh, that channel to the left drop out. Uh, 
And we will also play with that second amplifier to the right. Oh, yep, yeah, something's happening here. We lost one of them. Oh, yeah, there's uh, things happening, it appears there. We're definitely causing a lot of upset. And there we go, uh, channel one, totally gone. It actually probably happened quicker than that, but this it, there's a refresh rate. Oh, he's trying to come back. Look at that. We're fighting with him. Try more power. Okay, let's start the experiments here with the amplifier, uh, different amplifier setups. We're gonna start here, uh, first of all, channel one, I'm going to use uh, one megahertz of bandwidth and I'm gonna do an FM tone. It's gonna give us a nice uh, narrow spike and uh, you'll see what I mean in a second here. And this is the same setup with just a single amplifier. And we go with the spectrum analyzer and you can see a pretty narrow. Um, we are actually fighting with a lot of signals there. So we are hitting about, that's just right there. We are hitting about 50. So yeah, about 50-ish. Okay, let's put on a, a second amplifier. Okay, I'm back and I've got two amplifiers going, so that's 20 dB. Uh, okay, so back here, everything looks normal as can be. And we're transmitting a very narrow one megahertz of bandwidth. Um, we're going to see how much stronger we are. And... Uh, well, yeah, that made a big difference. Oh my God, it's going up to 30 now. Look at that. We are really, really strong. And wow, yeah, we wiped him out. A little bit more power, but we wiped that guy out. Pretty cool. Look, channel three is trying to come back. Channel one, yeah, we're definitely we, we wiped them totally out. So let's take a look at that. Uh, yeah, we are just about hitting 30 there. And keep in mind, guys, this is an omnidirectional antenna, so it's sending power out in all directions. The death ray was concentrated power. There's the death ray down there, that was concentrated power in one direction. So, uh, yeah. That's pretty impressive that that antenna is putting out that kind of power, minus 30, and uh, yeah, totally wiped him out. So let's let's turn up the, the 5 dB uh, booster on the hacker up. Let's try that next. So let's see, what are we getting there? We, yeah, we're just getting up to about 30, okay. So hacker ref, we're going to stop, and we are, going to go down here and we're going to turn that to a one and then we're going to start it again and let's see we should get even higher than 30 yeah definitely heading 30 more well, there you go guys and yeah he's still gone um, let's change, uh, let's actually start sweeping. Why don't we go right in the middle of the band and sweep, see what we can do. Okay, so we're going to stop. And we're going to go here and we're going to put in 20, 20, 40, done. And then there we're going to put in 20, 22, done okay 
That's right in the center of the band. I'm going to sweep full power. There we are, full power. We'll come back here. See channel one, he came back. We are sweeping here. Should knock out uh, whatever's in the center there. Our little friend is back. <laughs> Anyways, should be getting exciting pretty soon here. As soon as this iPad uh, does a refresh. But yeah, we are causing a lot of noise there. Actually, you know what? I'm using a, an FM tone. I should change that to random FSK. It will have a better effect. <clears throat> yeah, that's why we're frequency modulating. We don't want to do that. We want random FSK. That'll have a better effect. Hey. <laughs> You know, look at that. Yeah, there we go. So that's what you want to use, guys. Uh, random FSK, <clears throat> definitely. And one thing I noticed, too, when I'm doing this with a lot of bandwidth, this thing starts to get really hot because this one's actually driving the antenna. This one is more of an exciter. He's driving, one's driving the other. So, yeah. This guy will start to get really hot very quickly. Um, I was actually putting an ice pack on top of it to keep it cool because we don't want it to go thermal. Uh, you can actually burn it up. So we're driving a lot through that thing. Yeah, look at that. Cool. Okay, guys. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Okay guys, one other thing I wanted to cover in this video was a lot of people complain about my previous video that this was polarized wrong. And uh, actually it probably was, but it probably didn't make much difference because of my range. I was only going about 100 feet. The reason why I had it flipped was, well, it was for the picture. I had flippers sitting on there and this didn't exactly uh, look good. It was in the way, so I rotated it. Um, but I actually had somebody say they couldn't watch my video because I had it polarized wrong. And I was like, okay. So what I've done is I polarized it correctly and I put it back on the stand and we've got the uh, death sphere and the death ray now both mounted on the same stand. And I'm gonna shoot that signal into my house and I'm gonna do the exact same test. And uh, I'm gonna try to do this before it rains cause it's not looking good right now, the weather. But uh, there's your amplifier, and it's the exact same setup I had before, 2440, 1 megahertz. And you can see some rain is already starting to fall, so you got to do this quickly. But I'm going to start the transmitter. Let's go inside. And uh, we're going to need to turn on the spectrum analyzer here. Should be starting up. There we go. There it is there. So we're heading about 30. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> I'm right in, in the beam right now of it. So it's right out there. And that is, uh, wow, it's going all the way up to 17. That is, uh, yeah, it definitely looks more powerful because it's polarized correctly. But we're going to go down to my, the front of my house here. And this is where I actually did the previous test. So I'll just put it down on the table there. A little bit hard to see. I'll put some lights on. Yeah, maybe not. And... Uh, I remember it hitting 50 in the previous video, which, yeah, it's going beyond 50. Oh, it's definitely more, more powerful. Okay, well, yeah, of course, it's polarized correctly, so it's using the whole reflector. And uh, I'm in the previous video, it was hitting 50. 
So, wow, it's about 15 dB more. So you know what we're going to do just for fun, before it rains? We're going to put the second booster on there and we are going to um, turn that uh, internal booster on. Okay, stand by, guys. Okay, guys. We now have uh, Hacker Ref is running. And I have the booster turned on on the Hacker Ref. See the A1. And that is connected to the first amplifier. And that is cascaded to the second amplifier. And then that is going to the antenna right there. Okay, let's go inside and see what we're getting now. It's probably going to be really hot. Let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> um, amplitude. Let's change the scale a bit so we can see how far this is going. Look at that, it's hitting five. So let's take it down to the front of the house to the exact same spot here. We can see uh, it is going up to about 20-ish there. It's about 100 feet away. So yeah, very strong signal. And uh, let's go back. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, I kind of expected that. Anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. Please do give me some thumbs up. It always helps. And uh, there you go. Okay. We've been warned repeatedly that using free public Wi-Fi can put our personal information at risk. But facing a choice of using up our data or connecting with free Wi-Fi, most of us take the gamble. Today, I'm going to show you how to flash. A uh, easy, very easy way to flash the Flipper Zero Wi-Fi module uh, with Marauder. Uh, this is because uh, there's a lot of confusing information out there. It can be, you can be pulling all the hair out of your head trying to figure out how to flash one of these. So I'm going to show you the easy way to do it and how to just go straight to one particular GitHub site where you can download a zip file, put it on your computer and open it and just click on the batch file and it'll run and it'll program this thing. And it also gives you the feedback on your computer screen of exactly what's going on. So you know the thing's actually doing something. It's not uh, hang hanging or, you know, waiting to do something that you don't know. So we're gonna go over to this uh, GitHub. It's uh, Uber Guido Z Flipper. And uh, he's done a pretty nice job here putting together uh, some helpful links. Now there is a, uh, a web-based, um, one that he's got here, but I don't really recommend using this. I've tried it. Um, it's It doesn't give a lot of feedback because it's running off of a server. So you're kind of confused. Is it doing anything or not? It may be. I just didn't really want to wait around and, you know, see. So what I do recommend is you go down here and you download the zip file from here. And I'm going to do that right now. And we'll see it's downloading right there. Okay, it's downloaded. So we're going to open that zip file and uh, we're going to go over here and there is the zip file. The file is open and uh, we're going to click on the flash bat. And before we do that, we're going to come over to the flipper board. We're going to hold the boot down. We're going to hold the reset down. Then we're going to let go of the reset and then we're going to let go of the boot. And it is connected to my computer, as you can see, and we are going to click on the batch file there. And uh, it is going to ask us which one we want to do. And we're going to pick number one because we are flashing. So I'm going to press one and return. And it is going to start. And there it goes from where raced. Now, when I used the web-based one, it took um, it took 17 seconds just to erase it. And here it took like not even one second. So, but what I really like is the feedback we're getting there. We know uh, that it's actually doing something. There, 
And uh, that's it. You can close the window. So we, we've now flashed Marauder. And uh, okay, so we're going to close that. And I just want to show you one little thing here. <clears throat> it's very interesting is there's the ESP32 chip and there is the antenna, built-in antenna. And some of them come with this connector on the side, but you won't get that connector. You'll see that I do not have that connector. It's blank. And that is why, the reason why is because, see there's a resistor 15 and a resistor 14. Those actually are act like a switch. If it's placed in 15, it's connecting to the external antenna or the uh, built-in antenna and R14 would go to the connector, which would be an external antenna. So I wanted to point that out because those resistors are really hard to see and a lot of people uh, don't realize um, what's going on here. But we're going to connect an external antenna up to this guy later on, a really big one and an amplifier to extend the range of this attack. So here we go, guys. I'm now going to plug this into my flipper and we're going to do some deop attacks. Stand by. Okay, guys, so there we go. I got the Flipper Zero Wi-Fi module flashed with Marauder and it is currently attached to my Flipper Zero. My Flipper Zero is tethered to my computer and I've got QFlipper open to give you a bigger shot up here of the action. And over here on this tablet, I'm showing presently the Wi-Fi networks on the 2.4 gig band. And we're about to take all those out. And those are my neighborhood uh, <laughs> access points. So what we're gonna actually do with Flipper is we're going to go into apps and we are gonna go to GPIOs. And then we're going to go down to Wi-Fi Marauder. Gonna get this API mismatch, doesn't matter. And uh, we are going to scan APs. Now, I've if you do that, it's going to scan your neighborhood. It takes a little while. It takes about a minute. I've already done it, so I'm just going to skip that. And I'm going to go over here, and there is the list, and you can go through them all. Um, the first number is the number we're most interested in. Metro Police, number one. That looks like a good one to take out. So uh, we're going to go back here. We're going to select AP. Now, here... To select number one, that Metro Police AP, we're going to put one. We are going to save that. And then we're going to go back to the list. And now we're going to do an attack. Now we could just de-auth the Metro Police, but we're going to have a bit more fun. I like the Rick Roll, so we're going to start Rick Rolling. And this is a beacon uh, spamming attack. And we're going to see, oh my God, look what we've done. It just goes up and down the band and it just jams the entire band. And if you take a really close look at these access point names, it's actually the lyrics to Rick, uh, Rick Astley's song. <laughs> never going to hurt you, never going to deserve you, whatever, whatever. But yeah, so anybody that's actually trying to find an access point right now is, is just going to get a whole load of Rick Astley lyrics. So there you go, guys. Uh, I hope you found that kind of exciting. Yeah. So stand by. Let's see what else we can do. Okay. So now we're going to have some fun with the deauth attack with our freshly flashed Marauder Wi-Fi dev board. What I've got going on right here for experimenting with is an old uh, Linksys GL router, which is providing us our access point. And I also want to demonstrate that we're really close. Like, it's right next to us, but we're still going to take it out. Uh, okay, so the access point is actually acting as Marriott Hotel. When I did uh, experimenting with uh, Wi-Fi password stealing. It was set up to do Marriott, Motel 6, Hilton, and Holiday Inn. You can actually see them all there. We are connected to the Marriott access point on it, and this computer back here is also connected, as you can see, to Marriott, and uh, so is my other computer here. They're all using Marriott. So 
we're gonna get flipper here and we're gonna do Wi-Fi Marauder. We're gonna go in there, skip that API errors, not a problem. And we're gonna scan APs. And um, basically it is scanning right now all the available APs in the area. And uh, we'll just let it do its thing and it will shortly have a database. And as you see the Razzies is the signal strength. There's the channel number. There is uh, either the MAC or the name of the access point. A lot of MACs come up because there's a lot of hidden access points. Those are typically uh, devices, Internet of Thing devices that are talking to each other. They use Wi-Fi too. Wi-Fi is used for a lot of things than people realize. Anyways, I think we're done. We are going to go here. We're going to go into the, the list and we are going to find Marriott. Where is Marriott? <clears throat> Where is it? It's way down here somewhere. Linksys. Oh, there it is. Okay, 34 is Marriott. So we go back here and we're going to select it by typing in 34, which is that one. And there. And then we're going to save that. So as we've selected uh, 34, see, and we go back here. And now we're going to just do a deauth attack. So here we go, guys. We are deauthing Marriott at the moment. And we'll see what happens. Let's go over here. And oh, incorrect password. Oh, it's trying the Motel 6 one, too. And they're both incorrect because it's actually their virtual access points of one another. Oh, this computer just dropped off. Oh, it's trying to connect to Marriott. And it's having a problem. And go back here and look at that. Incorrect password. And this computer here. Oh, yep. See the globe. It has lost its connection. And uh, no internet. Oh, it's having trouble. It's trying. Can't, it cannot connect. So there we go, guys. The DOP attack is effective. And um, it's really interesting, uh, you know, as close as these devices are to the access point, which is like right there, Flipper is actually, because it's not actually jamming it, it's actually interfering with um, the messages being sent back and forth. And obviously the password, look at that. It's, it's uh, and this attack is actually um, created to grab the password, the encrypted password handshakes that these devices are now trying to connect back to that access point over and over again. Like this one here is actually just, oh, there he's gonna try. I'm gonna say connect. And it says incorrect password, look at that. So let's, let's stop the attack and we'll just do that. We've stopped the attack and let's see what happens. Connecting. Will it be able to reconnect on its own? This, oh, this one connected. It's back connected. Okay. This computer is still trying connecting. Let's go here. Uh, let's try it now. Connect. There we go. It's able to connect now. I wonder why. This one's still having trouble here. Oh, there we go. Finally connected. And we're back. We're back. We have the Wi Fi symbol. So there you go. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to actually start playing this video here. Oh, this is not a touch screen. Get so used to the touch screens. This is an old computer. So it's gonna start going, okay, there we go. And we're gonna start the deauth attack again and we're just gonna see how long that takes, that video. There's always some buffering on videos, but the deauth attack is happening. It shouldn't be too long.
Yep, we got the incorrect password again. Oh, this one is having trouble connecting again. So it shouldn't be too long. I can see down on the bottom it's already lost its Wi-Fi. I don't see the symbol. So that video is not going to last too long. That's just buffer right now. YouTube actually has quite a bit of buffer on it, so... It's already downloaded it. So yeah, we have lost the connection there and uh, this one here too. Let's try. Let's try just doing another video here. Oh, connect to the internet. Okay, so, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's stop the deauth attack. And let's see what happens here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we can connect now. And of course this one. <clears throat> There, it's connected now. It's interesting, the tablet needs you to initiate it again. It won't reconnect on its own for some reason. These other computers are all, uh, this one takes a little bit of time. It is connecting, there it goes, finally connected. So there you go, guys. I hope you found that interesting. And uh, yeah, there you go. The beloved Deauth attack. And that's just doing it at low power, uh, very close by. It's actually the ESP32 with the built-in antenna is one milliwatt. That is its EIRP. Um, we're going to play with that. We're going to wire an external antenna and we're going to try some higher power attacks. Um, it's actually hard to gauge without, well, I could measure the signal strength, but um, it'd be great if we could just go in some big open field and see how far. Um, but I've heard that with, over a watt of power and a good antenna, you can actually go a kilometer. So yeah, okay. Hope you enjoyed this guys. Take care, thank you. So uh, going back here, one of the greatest things about the latest Extreme Update that I've observed, in my previous video, I was doing the evil portal attack and um, I could not get it to work in Extreme. So what I had to do is put on Leashed on here and then go flash the ESP32 manually with four different files. And that got it to work, but it only did the evil portal. Like my board here, my Wi-Fi dev board could only do evil portal. Well, guess what? I flashed it back to Marauder. The Marauder firmware is on the ESP32. And now with the new Extreme firmware, the latest version, if I go into apps and then I go up, I have a Wi-Fi folder. This is something new. And Evil Portal and Wi-Fi Marauder are right there. And guess what? They both work. So here we'll go in and we'll just do a little demo of the Evil Portal. portal. And uh, select HTML. We're going to do Extreme. You can put in your own uh, Evil Portals. You can download all kinds of different ones. And uh, the Wi-Fi name, they already got Wi-Fi, Google Wi-Fi in there. So we'll just start the portal. And there you go. Blue light is on, which means the beacon is up and web server is up. And it is, it is ready for action. So if we go over here, we should see it popping up over here. Um, Google free Wi-Fi, there we are. So we are going to select that. How do I do that? Oh, yeah, there it is at the bottom. Connect. Actually, I believe I need to do this with this one. Um, we go here. Connections. Okay, Wi Fi is on. <clears throat> there it is there. Connecting, sign into network. This we need to sign into the network. And there's the extreme page that comes up. That could be any type of portal. And as you will see, I will put in my name. And my password is always 2469. 
and we'll go and then uh, we'll look at that Pay, uh, flipper captured it user and pass peter and pass is 2469 so that is evil portal it's all about you know acting as a bit of a honey pot and getting people to give you their credentials so don't do it guys it's not a good thing but makes i'm trying to make people aware here that hey this stuff does happen and anybody can do it but now with the new extreme firmware anybody can do it now i had a question about how to how to de-auth multiple access points i'm going to show you how to do that go in here and we do a scan and let's just let it scan and uh you know what i'll do let's get q flipper going here and you can see it up nice and big So, okay, it's scanned. It'll go on and on because there's so many access points in my neighborhood. But you go down here and you go to list. And, uh, okay, see to the left, there's numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, those are the numbers representing on our flipper um, the access point. This is how you select them, okay? So what we're going to do just for this demo, I'm going to select 1, 2, and 3. And uh, so what we'll do is we go back and we go in here to select. And then you just go in here and you go one. Okay, to select number one. And then we go save. And then we go back, do the back arrow. And now you got to go and you got to remove that. And then because you, you have to select each one manually and then save. And then do the back arrow and the flipper. Go back here, remove that, go here, three, and then save it. And now go back, back, and then go in your AP list, and you will see number one. You see it says selected under it. Number two says it's selected. Number three says it's selected. Okay, so those three are selected. Go back, and now attack, deauth. Okay, deauth is started, and it's going to attack those three that have been selected. So that's how you do that, guys. Uh, pretty simple. That's how you select multiple access points. And it is now deauthing all three of those. So, yeah. Okay, guys, and uh, stick around. I got some more news coming up, and I'll show you that news article about the kid at school that got caught doing the BLE spam. And what was really funny was they had some tech expert they got that's supposed to know everything. And he knew nothing about it. Um, you know, he didn't even know what, what the attack was. He, it's the, What he actually said was more like what he just looked up online. He said, oh, you can use a flipper to read the microchip in a cat and whatever else. But you know, it's like, yeah, they should have talked to me, not that guy. Anyways, okay, guys. Stick around, more is coming. WSMB4 Investigates has a warning about an item on your child's Christmas list. It's called a Flipper Zero, and at least one area school has already had a problem with it. WSMB4 Investigator Courtney Allen looked into what they are and how some kids are using them for trouble. You know, they, they had a child that brought a, a gun one time. It's why his son and many students bring a cell phone. But recently, a student brought a device to school that can interfere with that connection. That's pretty scary. It's called a Flipper Zero. Wilson County Schools confirms a student brought one to school last month and used it to shut off some cell phones in the classroom. It's a little thing that does a lot, multi-tool device. Nashville tech professional Kyle Greenup says flipper zeros can interact with anything that uses a wireless frequency. You could read a pet's microchip with this. You could read your tire pressure monitoring system with this. And that's not all. Greenup says flipper zeros recently got popular on TikTok for pranks like shutting off fast food displays. Amazon banned the device back in April since it can be used as a card skimming device. Greenup says the device is limited and can only interfere with devices within about 50 yards. Wilson County School says the student was disciplined, adding that their network was never breached. Oh no, we had some high winds this morning and uh came down and found uh, the death ray knocked over. 
Hopefully it's not the death of the death ray. Let's go take a look, see what happened here. Let's take a look, it's fiberglass, it should be okay. Yeah, it's okay. Let's put her back up. I think the worst damage was the birdie. <laughs> Let's bring it back up. Wow, this thing is heavy. Whoa, we have a little bit of damage here. <clears throat> oh, my fiberglass pole snapped. Look at that. <laughs> so it's a bit crooked now. Anyways, let's take a front. Oh, shoot. Look at that. Bang that in a bit, too. Nothing that I can't fix, but... Uh, yeah, that's what happens. I should have put some uh, weights on the bottom there. Whoa, check that guy out. It's a big plane. Yeah, that's an A380. Anyways, yeah, a little bit of fixing. We can fix it back up. No harm done. <laughs> the death sphere is a little bit busted up, unfortunately. Just the fiberglass pole. I'll just cut that piece off and should be all good. Okay, guys. In case you guys are wondering what that big plane was, well, there she is right there. The only A380 that flies out of Toronto, and that is Emirates. And, uh, so she came out uh, out of the airport here and went, this is the bank when she's turning. That's right where I am, right around there. And then out over the lake, and they stay in Canadian airspace. This is American airspace. And there they go, they do a basically a 180 and because uh, they flew out of the airport going in the other direction. And that's due to runway conditions and wind, why they do that. And, uh, yeah, there she goes, and, uh, on her way to Dubai. Be pretty cool to ride on that plane in first class, from what I heard. Apparently there's even, like, bedrooms and showers and everything. <laughs> okay, guys, hope y'all like that. There she is, flying away. Oh, you're back. You're back for more. You want some bread? Okay, hold on. Hold on, come here. Come here. You want some bread? I got some bread here for you. There you go. Whoa, crazy. Hey, take it. There you go. <laughs> I swear if I open that window all the way up, he'd come right inside here. <laughs> they are crazy little things. McMahon and McKinnon, 14 nothing Bears, then the defense, which hadn't put up a sack in 12 quarters, finally did. Well, if you're wondering what's happened, <laughs> so am I.